Charleston Navy Yard, now a National Historic Park, had a significant but largely overlooked role in the Civil War. Many iconic figures and ships had their origin here in the heart of Boston. From captured ships converted into ironclads to daring sailors, this Navy Yard had a small role in those stories. The Charleston Navy Yard, established in 1801, was across the Charles River from Boston. The United States was trying to build up its naval power at a time when Britain had almost reached the culmination of its naval power in Trafalgar in 1805. Thanks to this Navy Yard, and many others later built on just like it, the U.S. grew its fleet significantly. Here we see the USS Constitution, built just across the river in the North End in 1794. It symbolized the end of British hegemony in the seas. In the War of 1812, it proved to be highly effective and thwarted the British ability to wage war on the American continent. The sleek design of the ship was faster and more resistant to cannonballs, thanks to the live oak and white oak used for the hull. When the USS Constitution entered an engagement with the HMS Guerrero, it was able to deflect and stop many of the British cannonballs. Following this battle, the ship gained the nickname Old Ironsides. It was the first of many successful engagements. By the time the Civil War broke out, the Charleston Navy Yard had already built 12 ships for the US Navy, and it would go on to build a further 11 during the war. In total, 149 warships were built in the Navy Yard before it was closed in 1975. Some of the ships built fell into Confederate hands when the first few states started to secede. The USS Merrimack, for example, was built in the Charleston Navy Yard from 1854 to 1855 and was commissioned the year after. It was the flagship of the Pacific Fleet for several years. In 1860, it was decommissioned and docked in the Norfolk Navy Yard in Virginia. When the state seceded, the Navy burnt and sunk the ship to avoid having a capable warship fall into enemy hands. The Confederacy was short on warships. Therefore, they decided to raise the ship and refit it as an ironclad. It would be renamed the CSS Virginia, however, it was more commonly known as the CSS Merrimack. It would end up serving the infamous Battle of Hampton Roads in 1862. It caused great panic in the federal government due to its apparent capabilities. However, they were, on, they were caught unaware of the problems it had, namely the large draft and low water line, which prevented it from leaving calm waters. The Charleston Navy Yard's handiwork was once again showcased at yet another infamous Civil War naval engagement, the Battle of Mobile Bay in 1864. The USS Hartford, the flagship of Admiral Farragut, commander of the West Gulf Blockading Squadron, was built at the Navy Yard. Right here in Dry Dock 1, the two steam boilers and engine were fitted to the ship. It was one of the first steam-powered warships that was highly effective. While using only its sails, the ship could stay out at sea for up to 80 days. However, because it also had a steam engine, it could outmaneuver many enemies due to its great speed. In fact, the ship became famous in part due to the Admiral's quote, Damn the torpedoes! Four bells! Captain Drayton, go ahead! Chow it! Full speed! The battle was a decisive Union victory, as well as being proof of the usefulness of ironclads. Mobile Bay was covered by many Union newspapers and would be used extensively in President Lincoln's re-election campaign. One of the crew members that served on the Hartford was landsman John H. Lawson, a free black man from Philadelphia. He was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor for his acts of bravery at the Battle of Mobile Bay, as did 11 of his fellow crew members. He had continued to man his post after being injured in the leg by a cannonball. This was despite being told to head below deck. At the time, black men made up around 16% of the U.S. Navy, far greater than the percentage of the population in the northern states. 
It was thanks to the service and bravery of Lawson and many other free black men that the Union was able to win the war. Of lesser note was the USS Plymouth, also a Charleston Navy Yard warship, was built in 1843 and took part in the expedition to open Japan to international trade by Matthew C. Perry in 1853. It would be turned into a training ship for the remainder of its service. However, as it was docked in Norfolk Navy Yard, just like the USS Merrimack, it had to be scuttled to avoid capture. The Confederacy did raise the ship, but it never saw action and was again scuttled when the Union approached the yard in 1862. The Navy Yard slowed its production of ships following the war. The output of ships was only increased following the turn of the century. It was used mostly as an outfitting yard during this period. However, by the early 1940s, the number of ships being built skyrocketed. Two-thirds of all ships built in the Navy Yard were made in a five-year period from 1939 to 1944. This was because the U.S. was using the Charleston Navy Yard to build much of the destroyer fleet of the country, as well as Britain, as it was lacking the number of ships needed to guard merchant ships going between the countries. The USS Cassin Young, to my right, is an example of the Fletcher-class destroyers built in the Navy Yard. While this ship was not built in Boston, the design is largely the same as that of the other destroyers built in the Navy Yard. The end of World War II also brought an end to the great burst in productivity at the Navy Yard. With the exception of just two ships, the Navy Yard was only used for refitting after the war. During the Korean War and Vietnam War, many ships were refitted at the Navy Yard. In 1975, after future plans for the yard failed to appear, it was closed and made into the historical park it is today.